I'm now coming to my defensive Saturday superlatives, looking back at the championship week, including Saturday, and of course any that were played before. And a quick shout out to special teams, uh, Devontae Smith, who is ridiculous all the time, every time. Uh, you know, he went nuts on offense, but he almost had a, a uh, return touchdown. And I'm going to mention um, Cincinnati, though the kick, I think it was only 32, 30-something yards, 37, it might have been 37 yards kick. Um, uh, young Mr. Smith did it in, you know, rain and with pressure on him and, of course, secured a victory for Cincinnati. But mostly I'm going to focus just on defense, defense. So, uh, Wisconsin in a rather rock-ribbed affair uh, against Minnesota where both teams played not cleanly but hard uh, they have a sophomore linebacker who really stood out and that's leo chanel he had 10 solo tackles he had three assists he had two sacks he had a total of five tackles for loss a forced fumble a pass breakup that pass breakup was just a hair away from being an interception and like i said he was really the star on defense and staying with some of the players that really impressed me in the Big Ten games. In the person of one, Brandon Joseph, Northwestern has the Big Ten's uh, freshman of the year. They have the defense rookie of the year. They have a guy who's really put his name on the map and one day will be a big-time prospect, I believe. He's got decent size, better than decent size. He's listed at six points, probably six feet and change. 192 pounds, maybe not blazing speed, but probably high 4.4s, low 4.5s maybe. But he looks like an NFL cornerback. And he has six interceptions this year, which leads the nation. And he had a wow interception in that game that helped, uh, at least early on, for Northwestern to frankly look like the better team. So, bright future, obviously, for, for young Mr. Joseph. Um, now I have to come to Cincinnati. Cincinnati has a great defense, and I could. it's hard to pick a particular player. They all played well, but I'm going to just name a couple of guys. Their disruptive interior presence, uh, Curtis Brooks, he had three solo tackles. In addition to that, he had a sack, and even when he wasn't actually getting his hands on people, he was forcing them to, you know, he was getting pressure on quarterbacks. He was forcing running backs to, to bounce things away from where the play was designed. Also, uh, Kobe Bryant, their corner. Uh, had a very good game, four solo tackles, also had a pass defense, a forced fumble, and very solid in coverage. And this is the second time I've had mention of both those players, I believe. And of course, uh, Maja Sanders, their probably best known prospect on defense, and he had a good game as well. Uh, he had a couple solo stops, he also had a sack, and he had a, an assist on a tackle and one pass defended. And then another rather impressive inception, interception was uh, coming from Darian Beavers. He's sort of a rotational player, but he had a good game. And, you know, uh, like I said, had an interception. So on the other side of the ball in that championship game in the AAC, you had uh, Tulsa. And everyone talks about Zayvon Collins. They should. He had a couple of tackles and, you know, dropped into coverage and looked good and natural in coverage. But... <clears throat> More impactful, quite frankly, were some other guys. Uh, Jackson uh, Player, who had a couple solo tackles. Also, a you know, very important uh, penalty mistake, but mostly he played very well. In addition to those two solo tackles, he had a couple of assists. He also had a fumble recovery and had a very important uh, blocked kick. And then the guy that really I liked the most when I watched this last Tulsa game was their nickel-slash-safety Christian Williams, and he's a very instinctive, smart player, moves well, a really good tackler, uh, just had a terrific all-around game, seven solo stops, three assists, also had a forced fumble, a pass defense, uh, wasn't out of position very much, just really well played. And Clemson had a great total team defense game, but I'm going to mention a couple of guys in particular. Uh, first of all, they had six total sacks, and an amazing number of them, quite frankly, uh, one and a half of them came from a corner, a young corner in Malcolm Green. He also had a total of three solo stops, three assists, and like I said, even though he's a corner, he played a lot near the line of scrimmage. 
he's going to be a more more of a player as the future comes along. But you can see they like him a lot. They play him a lot, even though he's, you know, I think he's 19 years old. So, bright future. Uh, Marshall, in a losing effort, still they had a couple of impressive players. And so, Chesapeake's own, that's right, 757 football. I always have mentioned Tidewater guys. Kevin Marks is a Tidewater guy, too. But um, uh, Devontae Beckett had a couple solo tackles and 11 assists and was just around the ball all day long. He's probably going to be a special teams guy at the next level. He's an undersized linebacker. He doesn't seem to be quite enough of an athlete to make the switch to safety. But, like I said, I think he could, he could carve out a nice special teams career. I have to mention Stanford's... Well, Stanford as a whole played well on defense, but I have to mention Malik Antoine. He had nine solo tackles, also five assists, two passes defensed. I have to mention Gabe Reed, uh, sort of a guy I'd seen before but didn't think much of, but he had a, a game for the ages against UCLA. Uh, he had five solo tackles, four assists, two sacks, and UCLA, um, you know, as a as a team, you know, didn't maybe blow you away with what they did, but um, Stephen Blaylock looked good at times. Uh, that defense is coming along. It's rounding into form, I guess is how I'd say about UCLA's defense. And then uh, I have to mention LSU's defense, which once again has had its downs and its ups and its downs again, but they, they were up in this last game. Uh, Ali Gay, who is a very raw player, um, you know, a, another one of those kids who's of you know, African descent, I think his parents came here, I think he may have been born in the States, but he was, I think but his parents are from Ghana, no, Gambia, sorry, Gambia, I believe, one or the other. But uh, came to football, once again, a little bit later, like very often these children of, of immigrants do. But you can see the upside. You can see the potential. He had three solo tackles, also three assists. Uh, he forced a fumble. He had a sack and uh, recovered, you know. The, 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 he sacked, you know, it was a sack, strip sack fumble, and he recovered it himself. And he just looked, once again, he, was, he could just whip people with pure effort and, and ability. But once he actually learn some moves, he's going to be a real problem. And sticking with LSU, I have to mention Jay Ward, who had the pick six, uh, beautiful pick six on top of that, uh, had five solo tackles, also had uh, 11 assists and two interceptions, and just was an absolute beast. Beast! Uh, so, you know, things are, are maybe looking better on the bayou. And so this will probably be my, like I said, my, probably my last for 2020 and we'll see what happens with the bowl season. Uh, so I might or might not have one more maybe coming in the, in the, in the past year. But please, next year. But please, uh, feel free to let me know what I can do better. Uh, some people have asked about the using um, uh, film or images or things like that. Uh, that can get a little sticky with fair use. So it all depends on because you can't quote unquote rebroadcast without express written permission, you know, when they, if you, you may not listen to that part of the broadcast, but uh, I'll see what I can do about ever using highlights or clips or things like that, but you have to be very careful, otherwise you can get into a bit of legal trouble. But once again, um, it's been a really unusual season, and I enjoy the fact that I've gotten to talk about it with you guys, and thank you so much. Uh, and like I said, uh, I welcome criticism, comments, etc. Thank you.